today would be the third session of the GSDC CLO Summit. And uh, we are so excited to have another brilliant speaker among us. Uh, just before I go ahead and introduce to him, I would like to uh, give a special thanks to our official media partner, that is World Press Hub. Thank you so much for your support, and we hope that we really will continue with this connection. Uh, here is our uh, brief introduction about the hosting organization that is GSDC. So we are an independent, vendor-neutral, international credentialing and verification organization that has had 50,000 learners find credibility in the top emerging and skill-based certifications. Uh, we have over 60 plus certification portfolios and are also proud to be accredited by ANSI and ABICB. So ANSI is the American National Standards Institute and ABICB is the Accreditation Board of International Certification Bodies. Uh, our certification portfolios are well curated and designed by our subject matter experts and advisors who are also academic affiliates from Yale, Harvard, Stanford, MIT, and so on. Uh, we are also very proud to be uh, to be partnered with 50 plus global training ATO partners. Uh, they are our authorized training organization partners who add value to the training programs accredited by GSDC. Uh, our partners come from uh, a, a wide area of regions, from the African regions, from the American regions, the APEC, Latin, Middle East, and so on. And we're so proud to be a part of them as well. If you'd like to learn more about GSDC, feel free to go to our website. Uh, we'll be so happy to have you connect with us on LinkedIn as well. And uh, we'll be more than happy to guide you through our services if you require any assistance. Uh, thank our ATO uh, supporters who have gone through out the, uh, who have gone out of their way to uh, support the summit and share about our events to the to their network and uh, to uh, to all their people around. Very very thankful to each one of you, uh, whoever are here. I see some of you here. Thank you so much for joining as well. Uh, thank you to our individual supporters as well, the volunteers who have uh, come forward and supported us uh, in sharing about this news. Uh, very thankful to each one of you. Uh, just here quickly, an intro about the GSDC Chief Learning Officer and uh, about the GSDC l and Certificate. Uh, we have these certifications uh, available, uh, uh, accredited by GSDC. It is a, a global certificate, globally recognized, and has a lifetime validity. If you, if after the sessions, if you get interested in going through this part, we will be more than happy to guide you uh, through getting certified uh, in these two modules. So please do have a look if you are interested. We will share the link on the chat box, and you can have a check there. Yes, now without further ado, allow me to introduce our speaker for today. We have uh, Mr. Adam Grijalba. Uh, he is an established learning and development leader, executive coach and strategic advisor. Exper he is experienced in providing effective leadership development across various industries. He has served in the disciplines of learning and development, performance management, change management, organizational effectiveness, and leadership development. And he is currently the director of training and development for CBT company. Uh, Adam, we're so glad to have you here. Uh, just before I give you the time um, and information for the audience that we will have a QA and a uh, after the session for 15 minutes. So I request everyone to save your questions until then. And yes, uh, I won't take much time now. Adam, uh, you can take over the screen and uh, you can start start your presentation now. Okay, thank you, Sadalu. Thank you for that, uh, for that warm introduction. I, I certainly uh, appreciate that. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and be sharing my screen here in just a moment. So uh, be bear with me as I, as I prepare to share my screen. And so I'd like to share with you just an opening experience. So in one of my first roles outside of the military, I joined an organization where we brought people together on day one. And what we did is we taught them what our corporate strategy was, how their work ties to the corporate strategy, 
uh, some very important principles. One of those principles was around perfect customer service and how you can build that customer service within the company, both internally with other employees as well as externally to create that perfect experience for others. We also talked about the strategic direction of the company and some resources that would help each person, each employee to build their skills and to support the company's goals. And I found that that experience was very similar in all of the organizations I've been a part of. It was even very similar to my experience in the military where we understood what is the company's goal? Uh, what, is, what direction are we going? How do our individual skills tie to and ladder up to those goals that we have as an organization? And so today, my goal is to share with you some ideas that maybe might spark some thoughts for you, might stretch your way of thinking around learning and development. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm very pleased to be with you on the GSDC Chief Learning Officer Summit. And, and I'm thankful that you took some time out of your busy day, whatever time of the day that is for you, to, um, to, to do some learning around how you can tie employee strengths to organizational goals. And so those employee strengths become a really critical link for us as we think about how we build our skills. And so um, earlier in the chat, I'd asked the question about um, where folks are from. So uh, in terms of their, their function in the department, so, so lots, of, lots of different pieces of input. And as I've participated in the conference on day one, I saw that we represented a lot of different functions across the business landscape, uh, with a large majority of this audience, of course, being learning and development professionals. But, but if not, you're still someone who is a, an expert in your own learning and development. And today, I'm going to share with you some ideas that help you to build business success by building the skills of your employees. And so the approach that I'm going to be sharing is on the screen right now. Uh, as I call this, these are the five S's. And as you look at the screen, you might think these are already some skills that we already have within our organization. These are things that we're already doing. Uh, for example, we already have a great strategy. We're already focused on skills and skill gaps. We're also taking a look at what strengths do we have uh, within our employee base. We have a good structure that we put together, and we already create really good support in the terms of, of resources. Um, although that might be the case, maybe something that I share today or something that is shared during the Q&A session will help you to think a little bit differently about your approach to employee development and also might help you to sell that idea to leadership that, hey, we need uh, this new program. We need this new idea. We need this new way of thinking uh, so that we can develop the skills of our employees. So we'll start first with strategy. And as we take a look at company strategy, it's, it's all about figuring out what direction do we want to go. And as we think about company strategy, uh, one of the approaches that, that many companies will ta take is doing a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis, or SWOT analysis. And then based on that, tie that to their company's vision and purpose. Uh, and then that strategy also allows people, that SWOT allows people to think about what are our key focus areas by business unit, what's our strategic focus area, and what are some key initiatives that we need to be working towards. But the first step really is understanding where we are. And so a great strategy approach is to ask yourself, where are we today? So thinking about our industry, thinking about the markets that we're working within, thinking about our employees, our employee base, where are we physically right now as, as an organization? And then now that we have that clear picture, the next step would be to say, where do we want to go? So as we envision our future, where do we want to see the organization going? What are some of the things that we want to be able to leverage and, and use? And uh, then the next question is, how are we going to get there? And that's what strategy does for us. It, it gets us to that path so that we can get where we want to go. As I mentioned earlier, that first step really is taking a look at our strategy and what specifically is that strategy for us. And it begins with a strength analysis, uh, a SWOT analysis. So as you take a look at the, at the screen here, you see uh, these different categories. And many of you have probably used SWOT analysis before. 
analyses before. If not, that's okay. Uh, I'll be talking you through this. And one thing that's really important is if you're someone who's really practiced in doing SWOT analysis, that's great. If you're not, this helps to build your skill as a business professional. And no matter what role you play in the company, whether it's learning and development or marketing or sales or accounting, whatever that skill is, you are a business professional first and you're that skill set later. So it's a nice way of kind of reframing how we think about our skills. And so we'll have a lot of different opportunities throughout my uh, presentation today to really reflect on different areas. And we'll start off first with strengths. What I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to take a moment. And I'd like for you to, if you have paper and pen handy, or if you have another screen you can open on your window, open up that screen and let's take 30 seconds to think about what your strengths are. I'll describe a little bit more in just a second here, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about what strengths are. Strengths are those things that are internal to our company right now. So as we think about strengths, those strengths might be we are great at marketing, we are we're fantastic at sales, we have perfect customer service. Whatever those strengths are, think about what those strengths are. Those are internal to the company. And I'd like for you to take the next 30 seconds to think, what is a strength for me and my company? We'll get more into the analysis of strengths in just a few moments here. So now I'd like for you to think about what's a weakness for our company. And so a weakness could be something that's, that's been called out. You know it's something that your company has to get better at, or it could be something that is not yet a strength for you. So this is something that, that we're pretty good at, but we're not at that next level of performance. So uh, once again, this is something that's internal to your company. We'll talk about external in just a few moments here when we talk about opportunities and threats. But think about something that is a weakness for your company. In fact, you might come up with, as you might have with strengths, several strengths. Think of a few weaknesses that you can identify uh, within your company, the way that your, your company operates. Once again, we'll take 30 seconds for that. Thank you for participating in this activity so far. Now we're gonna take a look externally and ask ourselves, what are some opportunities that are available for us? Maybe there's opportunity for market share. There's perhaps opportunity for you to, to partner with external partners, uh, partner with your customers. So what are some opportunities that exist for you today? Maybe it's that new product that you're, you're thinking about launching. So what is an opportunity for you? Once again, we'll take 30 seconds to take a look at, uh, at what's on the horizon, what, what could possibly be next for you and your company. And the last part of acti this activity is we're gonna take a look at threats. So as you take a look at your competitive landscape, what are some of the threats that exist? Are those threats around uh, supply chain? Are those threats around looking for the right talent given uh, who is available in, in the job market? So is it, so is it filling roles? that uh, and wondering how you're, you're gonna be able to do that. What are some threats that currently exist for you in your business? Once again, we'll take 30 seconds. All right, thank you for taking the time to, uh, to think through what, what is on the competitive landscape that might be a threat to your organization. So now we need to ask ourselves a couple of really important questions. And these questions come from a Harvard Business Review article from this summer uh, by the authors Reeves and O'Day, and I'll be uh, I'll be posting a uh, uh, some information when we go into the Q and A session, so that you can access this this article, this Harvard Business Review article. And there uh, there are two questions that the article poses. The first question that you, you should ask before you come up with a strategy is: Is there a problem to be solved? So as you take a look at your SWOT analysis, what is it that that indicates a problem? And the problem could also be an opportunity. So for example, maybe there's an opportunity to, to increase your customer outreach. So is there a problem to be solved? And I think in taking a look at your SWOT analysis, you can probably say, yes, there, there is something that needs to be solved. The next question is what kind of problem is this? Is this a problem that is going to help us to increase um, uh, profit? Is it going to help us to grow? Is it something that's going to help us to further engage our employees? So what kind of problem is it? So two uh, great strategy questions to ask yourself. So now I'd like to take us through an example of how we might be able to use the SWOT, just knowing where we are to say, okay, where, where do we want to go? 
And one of the great ways of doing that is taking something that is a strength and applying it towards a weakness or taking something that is a strength and applying it towards an opportunity. So the example that I'll use is, um, is sales. There's a fantastic book that I read uh, just recently called Every Job is a Sales Job. And that book by Dr. Cindy McGovern is exactly how the title, what the title states. Every job that we do is, is a sales job. When I think about my role as a learning and development professional, I'm constantly selling ideas. I'm constantly connecting with leaders, with employees, with external business partners. And, and I'm trying to sell ideas. I'm trying to sell a new approach. Think about you and your, your current role. What are some opportunities that you have to sell? Give yourself a moment to think about what are some of the opportunities that you have to sell in your current role? Maybe you had to renegotiate a time for a meeting. So that's a sales, sales job. Maybe you needed to ask for resources. Well, that's a sales job as well. So no matter what part of the business we represent, uh, from, uh, from, from accounting, through marketing, through sales, whatever your role is, you are someone who is, who is constantly selling. So perhaps we can take something that's a strength for us. Maybe we have great sales skills within our organization and we can apply those to an opportunity. For example, that opportunity might be fantastic, um, uh, just this new fantastic market that's, that's opened up for us. Maybe that's opened up through other work that we've done uh, with the company. We have new customers who are, are eager and anxious for whatever product or service we offer. So that's an example of how we can apply a strength, our ability to sell to something that's an opportunity, a new market that, that's opening up for us. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, the SWOT analysis uh, leads us to strategy. And so maybe you have a, a different approach to strategy. Maybe you have access to something like uh, goals and objectives. And so as you take a look at your goals and objectives, um, ask yourself, how can employee development tie back to those goals and objectives? Remember, you know, we're first business people and we're second learning professionals or accountants or marketers or sales, uh, sales uh, uh, professionals. So as you take a look at those, um, at those goals, ask yourself, how can I develop my employees so that we can grow into each of these objectives that are set before us. Now, let's say that your, um, your approach is you haven't yet seen any guidance documents. There are still some that exist. So other guidance exists in the form of standard operating procedures, job descriptions. There are a lot of different uh, types of guidance. Even company values can, can serve as guidance for you to build the case for employee development for you to have a conversation with your team about here's how we need to develop, for you to have a conversation with your leadership to say, hey, I need these resources so that we can develop in this, in this space. So there's plenty of other guidance that you can uh, take a look at as well. So now I'll transition to the, uh, the next step in the process. And that step is taking a look at skills. And as we take a look at skills, one of the things that we want to do is we want to take a moment uh, to do a gap analysis. And in that gap analysis, we want to ask ourselves, um, where, uh, where are our skills today and what skills do we need to leverage those capabilities? For example, let's say that we're already great in sales and, um, and we want to leverage those for a new market opportunity that, that exists for us. A great question to ask ourselves is how are, we, um, how are we building those skills? How have we built those skills and how can we continue that success? And there are a number of really good questions that you can ask yourself, and I'll just go through three really quickly. One of those questions that you can ask yourself is this, why is this skill a strength for us? And as you ask yourself why that skill is a strength for you, what it leads you to, to the answer for is what connection does this skill have to what's most important to us as a company, our company values, our company culture, the way that we have built talent within the organization, and so as you start to ask yourself those questions, then you can repeat that success with uh, less experienced employees, with new employees as they join. And you can figure out how can we build that strength, maybe even at a faster pace than we've built that strength previously. Another great question to ask yourself is what evidence do we have about the quality of our skills? And I love this question because what it starts you to start to think about is, okay, so how do we start tracking? 
progress in skills. And it starts to get the wheels turning around how are we going to create some kind of an accountability mechanism to continue to build the skills that we have within the company. And so this becomes a really good question for you to ponder and start to create some, some systems and some processes around more about that in, in just a little bit here. And then another great question to ask yourself is what are the opportunities to further build that skill? And as you think about what those opportunities are, they, they could be all around you. Maybe you take subject matter experts to share their skills with, with others. Maybe you take one department who is, is really knocking it out of the park in terms of they are, are getting the best results and sharing what they're doing with other parts of the business. So now the question becomes, how does an employee develop their skills? And so as you think about employee skill development, it, it really can happen in, a, in several different ways. And I'd like to describe really quickly three ways that we can build skill. We can build skill through traditional learning. So when we think about traditional learning, it's items like going to a class, taking an online learning course, reading a book, watching a video. We can also build skill through social learning. Social learning is learning through coaching, through mentoring, through a connection with someone, connection with peers. And it can also be experiential learning. So experiential learning is, is just getting out there and getting the job done, uh, working through the things that you need to, to work through, um, on-the-job training, uh, having a side-by-side uh, a -side, uh, work experience where you're working on something and someone is coaching you as, as you're working through whatever you're, you're doing. So kind of a little bit of combination between social learning and experiential learning kind of blended together, which is, is super important. While all three of these is, is really important, are really important, the most important thing to keep in mind is the best learning blends all three of these together. And so blended learning solutions might be something that many of you on the call today are already doing as you're building that blended learning opportunity. And as you think about our, um, our work here today, I'm sharing with you some ideas. So that's that traditional learning. In just a little while here, we're going to be posing some questions of each other in the in the chat and uh and we'll be doing some social learning and then the experiential learning is something like what we just did with the SWOT analysis where you sat down and you thought about something and, and took some notes around uh something that's a strength weakness uh, opportunity or threat for you so once again the best learning is blended learning and today's conversation is, is a part of that uh that mixture of all three of those now there are some um professionals, learning development professionals that, that like to tie this to a specific percentage. Uh, for example, the 70-20-10 learning model. As you think about it, uh, most of our learning really needs to be done through experience. So a lot of times folks will say, yes, 70 percent of your learning really should be experiential, going at it and doing it. And when you think about it, you involve more of the senses. You involve more of the emotions as you go through experiential learning. You're actually going out and doing the work. Others say, so 70% for experiential learning, 20% uh, is, should be social learning, should be learning from others, asking questions. And we'll be doing that a little while later today is asking questions and doing some social learning. And then 10% should be traditional learning. Unfortunately, oftentimes, all we think about learning is just that traditional learning and we don't give ourselves credit for going out and having that experience or talking with a mentor or a coach and, uh, and getting some of that social learning as well. So now let's tie this idea to um, the different areas that we develop in as employees. And let's talk about how we build the right skills. So there are three types of skills that a person can build, technical skills, professional skills, and influence skills. And these are very broad categories. And I'll describe those uh, over the next couple of moments here. So as we think about technical skills, technical skills are those things that oftentimes we see on a resume, and we have to qualify ourselves uh, to get the job in the first place. So we have to go out and get that instruction. We have to do that apprenticeship. We have to go out and take the courses that help us to understand just kind of a base level of knowledge so that we can build those technical skills. When you think about it, 
their 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 math skills that are needed in most of the jobs that that we do in in some form or fashion. There are typing skills that we need. There are analysis types of skills. Uh, many of us on the call today probably used Excel quite a bit, so that's a technical skill that that is something that that needs to uh, that needs to be built. And so as we think about how we build those technical skills, we want to think about how we can blend all three of these experiences. So let's go back to our example of <clears throat> taking our sales to the next level. Um, really leveraging our sales skills to then build our uh, build our market share. And so as we think about that, maybe we sit down and we do some traditional learning. We say, okay, so what are some of the sales skills that maybe we're not leveraging today? What's a, what's a new way of selling that we're not thinking about? We're already good at it, but what are some ways that we can sit down and we can learn from someone who is an expert and learn those specific skills? Then maybe we get together with a subject matter expert that's, that's in the organization and do a little bit of social learning and saying, okay, so based on what we've learned in the classroom, we've learned in the conference that we attended yesterday, or we learned in this YouTube video that was a very short video, or maybe it's something out on LinkedIn learning that we, uh, that we learned. How do you think you can apply that, or have you applied that before? And then actually going out and doing that and, and really practicing. So that's a way we can build that technical skill uh, around, around sales, so the mechanics of sales. Not really the connection piece yet, but just kind of the mechanics of sales. So how do we do that? So how do we create that plan to sell? How do we look for the right opportunities that, that we need? Um, how do we um, ask for the opportunity to sell to our customer? And so those are kind of the mechanics of it, kind of the technical piece. And we'll talk about some of the other components in uh, just a moment here. And so as we think about professional skills, those are the skills that we uh, that we need to just be a business professional, understanding our business, understanding our industry, understanding how to uh, connect with others. Um, oral and written communications fall into that category of professional skills. And so as we think about uh, professional skills in terms of how we leverage the strength of already great sales capabilities, to how do we then leverage those to, to jump into this new market or, or look for new customers, um, we can take that same approach and we can ask ourselves, so the professional skills that we have, how are we understanding the market so that we find the right customers? And maybe we have a class on that. Uh, we do some, some in-person instruction, or maybe we, um, we go out and we watch a YouTube video on you know, what, what the mind of the customer is today. And so we can understand how to how to make that connection. Then we do some social learning and we talk about, okay, how, how can we apply it with, within our business now that we've taken some time to, to do some, some self-study? Now let's talk about it as a group. Let, let's have just kind of a, a mentoring session, peer mentoring session, not necessarily, we, hey, we want the expert at this, but what do our peers think about this idea and how can we apply it within our own business? And then we have that experiential learning of going out and practicing some of those ideas, really, really learning how to um, how to connect based on where um, where the the market or the industry is today. And then the last set of skills that we can build are influence skills. So we, as we take a look at influence skills, sometimes people call these leadership skills, but these are how do we connect with others in a way that gets them to move in the right direction. And so as we think about influence skills. Once again, we can take that approach of building uh, each of the elements of this blended learning solution together. So for example, uh, maybe one of the topics that we want to, uh, to explore is how do you, how do you uh, work with a difficult customer or how do you get someone past their objections? So uh, we can talk about how do we get people past their objections, do some traditional learning around that. Once again, maybe it's a YouTube video or a TED Talk or whatever the case might be. Uh, it's some way of just getting just some baseline knowledge on it, then talking about that through social learning, and then actually going out and doing that, working with uh, uh, with our our customers to to increase our sales. The bottom line is within our companies, one of the things that we want to be able to build, whether we're a learning professional or we're not a learning professional, is that skill building really happens every single day. And we can do that by leveraging each of the components of traditional, social, and experiential learning.
So now let's take a moment to, um, to think about strengths and what strengths um, we need to apply so that we can leverage our skills and meet our business strategy. And uh, it's so important for us to think about what employee strengths are. We'll talk about that in just a couple of moments, but I'd like for you to make this personal for you. And what I'd like for you to do is I would like for you to think about something that is a strength for you. And actually, I'd like for you to think about several things that are a strength for you. So let's take, um, let's take one minute, actually, to, to do this activity and uh, think about things that are strengths for you. So if, once again, if you have that piece of paper, just write those down, open up a window on your computer and type, down, type out what are strengths for you. Each time I do an activity like this, I think, wow, one minute is a really long period of time. So hopefully you were able to come up with some, some really good strengths. And maybe some of those strengths are some of the ones that you see on the screen here. And those strengths really become the building blocks for your future success. And as you think about those strengths, um, I'd like for you to just answer for yourself this question, why should we focus on employee strengths? I'll, I'll, share, I'll share my ideas in, in just a moment here, but I'd like for you to consider why strengths should really be our starting point. And I'll give you a couple of ideas to think about. The one idea that I'll share comes from Elena Noel in her book, Inspiring Accountability. And her book is all around how a leader can inspire accountability within the workplace. And her premise is, and I agree with this premise, is that people want to be seen as competent. I know how to do my job. They want to be seen as contributing. Yes, hey, you know, I, I made some progress on this and I moved the ball forward on this particular task or project. And they also want to be seen as important. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people say, wow, I, I really feel like my work is important here. And if we can build those ideas into the work that we do on a daily basis where people see themselves as competent, contributing, and important, that's a great starting point for us. Because then we leverage the very best of what we can get from our employees by focusing on what is most important to those, those employees. And we start from a, from a place where, where strengths are something we talk about on a daily basis. The other idea that I would share with you around strengths is it's so much easier to work on a strength than it is to shore up a weakness. In fact, a lot of times we can take things that are strengths for us and then we can apply them towards a weakness. For example, let's say that a weakness for you is something that is a technical skill. Ask yourself, okay, so there's a specific technical skill that, that's, um, that I'm trying to work towards. I'm not yet there. What strengths do I have that I can apply to that. Maybe planning and organizing is a strength for me. Patience, persistence, those are strengths. How can I take those strengths and apply them towards that technical skill development? And what that will lead you to do is it'll help you to start from a position of strength versus a position of a gap that might exist. So the next idea around this business success approach is the idea of structure. And as you think about structure, it's, it's structure in a couple of different ways. So the first way is structure uh, that's important to the employee and the second structure that's important to the individual or to the company rather. And so as we think about structure and what is gonna be that bridge that gets us to where we need to, to go, um, I would offer just a couple of tips here. Uh, the first of those is creating an individual development plan. So what is that plan for your employees' growth and development. And so the more those plans can ladder back up to strategy, the more impactful those plans become. Learning for learning's sake is, is never just never a good thing. It, it should always be learning towards a goal of some sort. Even if that learning is, I want to do something uh, on, on my free time that's, that's recreational. Uh, I want to read a book uh, that, that's, that kind of stretches my, my thinking, or I just want to just have some downtime. I want to uh, go watch uh, uh, something on the internet, whatever the case might be. But when we think about an, an employee in a work environment, that individual development plan has to have the goal of moving the business forward, of leveraging strengths, shoring up those weaknesses so that you can meet your business strategy. So having a plan isn't good enough. That plan also needs to be followed up with conversation. Uh, employee to leader conversation. Okay, so Adam, you said you're going to be working on these three things. 
over the course of this quarter. How are you doing on that? G give me some progress. Here's some things that I've seen. Where, where are you seeing progress? And then, then hearing from Adam's leader um, where he has seen, he or she has seen progress in those areas. But important to have a plan, but just as important to, to follow that up with a conversation. Now, in terms of the company, one of the things that we want to do is we want to be able to track progress and then tie that back to our business goals. So as we see this person getting better at their selling skills, um, what numbers are we seeing coming in? Um, how many new accounts are, are they working? How many more uh, products are they selling? Uh, how are we really opening up this opportunity that we thought at the beginning of the year we'd have, and now we're actually starting to see some progress? But really, really important to, to track that uh, and connect that back to business goals. And what that ends up becoming is the business case for us for learning and development. That becomes the case for resources and how we're applying them well and how we can ask for future resources in the future. Resources, of course, being more than just money. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's creating a program where you have leaders as teachers within the organization because you've seen so much success in learning and development. Now you want to have leaders also teaching some of that content. We, you want to have subject matter experts that are teaching that content as well. So super important to track progress uh, to, uh, to business goals. The last element that I'll discuss before we go into a Q&A is support. And so as we think about support, what types of support is needed for, uh, for the work that, that we're doing? And support can come from a lot of different directions. And as, as we think about that support, it should help to grow and develop our employees so that they can support our business goals. And as we think about internal and external resources, so I, I've mentioned a couple of times that internal resource of a subject matter expert. There is so much um, that a subject matter expert brings to us. So they bring to us their experience and their growth in the organization. They can help us to compress that learning time for us. So what might have taken them 10 years to learn, maybe within six months, they can share those, those lessons from, from the 10 years with someone that they're, they're mentoring. Maybe they can serve as someone who is a coach and they coach others to success. And there are a lot of great coaching uh, models that, that exist out there. One of my favorite coaching models is, is the GROW coaching model. Uh, and that becomes another great external resource. Uh, you, can, you can look that up on, uh, online and learn more about the GROW coaching model. But it starts with a goal. What's, what's the goal that we have for this person's development? Uh, what's the reality? So where are they today? So kind of like our starting point when we did our SWOT analysis. Um, what are some of the... Um, uh, opportunities that that, have, that person has to, to grow in, in whatever skill that is. Um, and then uh, what's the commitment that person makes? What will that person do? So thinking about how do we coach, how do we mentor within our organizations becomes a, a really uh, important internal resource. Um, other internal resources that we have are guiding documents that, that we have that can, that can help us to understand more about why this is an, an important skill for us to have as an organization. Uh, and uh, we can also leverage some external resources as well. One of my favorite external resources is the internet and going out and, and looking and seeing what's, what's new and different out there. What's a different way of thinking about things? Uh, we can partner with other organizations to, um, uh, to build em employee skill and, and development. Uh, we can take part in, uh, uh, in different uh, industry conferences. Uh, we can have membership and industry associations. And then we can leverage some of those, those external resources as well. So, so many different resources exist. Um, uh, one of my favorites, of course, is, is, as I said, that online piece. And it's looking at YouTube videos and, and TED Talks. So some great opportunities for us to, uh, to learn and grow. And so as I've described this business success approach, perhaps some questions have come to mind. As you think about, you know, how do we uh, make that connection to strategy? What skills and skill gaps do we need to, uh, to be thinking about? How do we leverage employee strengths and why do we even start from that position of strengths? What kind of structure works best for, for our company? And then lastly, what support is there that we can provide to, to our employees? 